Hello everyone. The title of this tutorial is Understanding Subject Formula as well as Change of Subject Formula. We have two problems here, but before then, let us first of all understand what it means by a subject. Let's assume we have a cycle and this cycle has a radius of maybe 7 cm and your teacher asks you to find the perimeter. Perimeter of this cycle. What you need to know first is the formula used to find the perimeter of a cycle. Perimeter denoted by P is equal to 2 pi r. 2 multiplied by pi which is constant multiplied by the radius of that cycle. But what are we talking about in this aspect? We are talking about perimeter and hence perimeter is now the subject of our discussion. If perimeter is the subject of our discussion, hence it is said to be the subject of the formula. Alright, so all you have to do is to substitute the value of r in this formula to find your perimeter. Therefore, you should know that that term, or um, what do we call it, a variable, right? That variable that always stands alone is said to be the subject of the formula or relationship. So what if you are asked to make R the subject? You have to make sure that R stands alone without anything attached to it. So by dividing both sides by two pi, because the relationship between R and two pi is multiplication, and the inverse of multiplication is division. So once you want to get rid of two pi, you have to divide both sides by two pi. And you know, if you have a scale, Whatever you add to this side, you have to add it to the other side in order to make the scale balance. So if you divide this side by 2 pi, you have to divide the other side by 2 pi. And hence, 2 pi here, 2 pi here, 2 pi and 2 pi, where is that? will cancel. And you see we have only R there. Therefore, R is equal to P, which is the perimeter, divided by 2 pi. And hence, R is now the subject. So, I believe we have understood what it means by subject. That term or a variable you are looking for that stands alone without anything attached to it is said to be the subject of that formula. So now how can we make, okay, I think I have to choose some variables here at random. Let us choose M here and maybe let us choose Q here. Let's make M the subject in this equation and Q from the other equation. So what are the steps? Whenever you wish to make any variable the subject, you have to take away all terms that are connected to that variable, starting with the ones that are farther away from that variable. Let me give you an instance. Suppose we have y equal to 2a minus 3. y is now the subject of this equation. So what if you are asked to make A the subject? You have to go to the side where you have that A. So A is to the right hand side of the equation. So if I were you, I can rewrite it as 2A minus 3 equal to Y. So that what I want to make the subject is already to the left hand side because that is the standard way of making any variable the subject. Then secondly, before we start, you have to look at, because we have two, we have negative 3. Which one is more farther away from E? Definitely negative 3. So you have to get rid of negative 3 before coming back to 2. Because 2 is more connected to E than negative 3. So what is the inverse of negative 3? It's positive 3. That is the opposite, right? So 2A will be equal to Y plus 3. You know, 3 was negative. As it crosses over, it becomes positive. Then lastly, since the relationship between 2 and A is multiplication, you divide both sides by 2. And hence, A is equal to Y plus 3 divided by 2. And hence, A is now the subject. Well, let me give you another instance. Assuming we have the same equation 2A minus 3 equal to Y. But this time around, you have a bracket here. So the question is, which one is more farther away from A uh, among 2 and 3, negative 3? 
Definitely two. Why? Because we have a bracket here. A bracket here is talking about a whole. So they are one family. A and minus three, they are now one family. They are connected. You understand? So anything outside will be treated first. So two is more farther away from A than negative three this time around. So since two is multiplying, then you divide. We have two minus uh, A minus three is equal to Y divided by two. Then you take uh, negative three to the other side. You have A equal to Y divided by two plus three. You see the difference? Always start with that term, which is farther away from the variable you are looking for. So let's get started. All right. We want to make M the subject here. We have a square root. So this square root is a family. It contains a rational expression, M minus Y divided by M plus one. So how do we do? Therefore, the whole of M minus Y divided by M plus one is now a family. We have to get rid of the square root first. And the inverse of square root is square. So once you square both sides, you have k squared equals m minus y divided by m plus 1. But the problem is, we have m here and we have m here. And our main goal is to make m the subject. And how do we do that? We can confidently cross multiply. You can rationalize this. Nothing will change. Dividing by 1 will not change anything. So we cross like this, we cross like this. So let me start with the top. This is the same thing as k squared times m, which is m k squared. Then k squared times 1 is still k squared. This is equal to 1 times m is m, 1 times negative y is negative y. Then you bring those with m to the left and those without m to the other side. Already we have m here, so we have m k squared. As this crosses over, it becomes negative m. This is equal to, already we have negative y there. As this crosses over, it becomes negative k squared. All right, we are almost done. Factorization. Between these two terms, we have m in common. So you bring the m outside. Inside, we have k squared. Because you have to take this divide by m, which is going to give you k squared. Negative m divided by m will be negative 1. And this is equal to negative y minus k squared. And finally, since there is a multiplication between these two terms, and you want to get rid of k minus 1 just to have m alone, you can divide both sides by k squared minus 1. And finally, m is equal to negative y minus k squared divided by k squared minus 1. M is now the subject of this formula. Uh, how you arrange this doesn't matter. Some people might decide to factor out negative 1, divide the top and the bottom by negative 1 so that this becomes 1 minus k squared and this becomes just y plus k squared. It doesn't matter. Your main goal is to make M the subject and you are good to go. Move to the other side. This is a family. Your main goal is to isolate everything living Q. So I have to start with anything outside the family, which is 2 over 3. And the inverse of 2 over 3 is 3 over 2. And hence, you know, naturally this has a power of 1. So I can multiply 1 by 3 over 2 and multiply 2 over 3 by 3 over 2 as well, just to get rid of this exponent. So this becomes P to the power of 3 over 2 equals RQ no, RK divided by Q minus MS. So which one is farther away from Q? This one. It is more related to this than this. So let us take this one to the left. But sometimes I prefer to take this one to the right, everything here, uh, because our main goal is to make Q the subject and I want to see Q to the left. But notwithstanding, let's continue. As this crosses over, it becomes positive. So we have P to the power of 3 over 2 plus ms. This is equal to Q, uh, RQ, RK, sorry, divided by Q. Very simple. There's one thing you, you should know about rational expression. You can always switch them. If I have 1 over 2 equals 2 over 4, 
I can always switch terms. I may decide to bring four here, take one to the other side. Yeah, you can switch them always. This is what I mean. I can write it as four over two equal to two over one. We have switched them. The value will remain the same. Four divided by two is two. Two divided by one is also two. So I can switch the whole of this with Q. So if Q comes here, remember it is multiplying. As it crosses over, it becomes a multiplier. This is equal to, let me take it to the bottom a little bit. This is equal to RK divided by the whole of this content, P to the power of 3 over 2 plus MS. As simple as that. Thank you for watching. Do share to your learning colleagues and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more exciting videos. Bye-bye.